Hello and welcome back to the Punny Math Teacher. Expectations for today is to remember to use twice the video's length. That's the expected length. You can always go longer. And if you get it all down, then great, your unit shorter. But don't try to rush it. Make sure you're actually processing and taking the time. I try not to put wait time into this video so that you can put the wait time where you need it, where you need to take a breath, where you need to go take a water break, and walk around the house for a sec. Um, so this way you can make it learning at your pace. All right. So X, uh, objective is the same objective for the rest of our unit. So we just finished graphing the system of equations to find its solution. We're now going to move on to substitution and we will then move on to elimination and then inequalities. Here's our comprehension questions. Here's our table of contents. So we've done graphing. We're now on page 37 for substitution. So 37, 37, there we go. Okay, so substitution, getting rid of that page, we're on this page, and then we'll use orange, why not? So we're going to have steps on the left-hand side and examples on the right-hand side, so I'm going to write all the steps first, and then we will go through all of our three examples. Alright, so steps, we're going to rearrange one equation. So one variable is isolated or by itself. Okay. Second step is to substitute or like a replacement. If a substitute teacher came into your classroom, they'd replacing for that day, replacing your teacher. So it's a substitute that equation for the same variable in the second equation. And we're going to use equation a lot, so if you want to abbreviate it with EQ, you're welcome to. Um, and then also, we're still working with the definition that a system of equations is only two equations for this unit, but you can actually apply this concept to a larger system. So then we're going to solve the resulting equation for the remaining variable. And fourth step, we're going to, I'm going to say replace just to, I mean, it's, it, it is substitution, but I'm going to say replace um, just so we have a second verb there. That value back in to find second variable. And then remember that in the case of having two coordinates, um, two equations, our answer is a coordinate. Typically, that is x comma y. Sometimes you have different variables because they represent different things, but then think about which one's actually on the x-axis. T is usually time. That's usually an x-axis independent variable. And then what variable would go on your y-axis? So think about that when you're doing a coordinate. Um, yeah. So these are our steps. In the margin up at the top, I do want to just do a random example that if I have 2x minus 3, this is an expression. There's no equal sign. It's just an expression. But if I say x equals 1, can you evaluate this expression or solve it? I guess evaluate's better or simplify. Um, I'm going to substitute x is the equal to 1. They are the exact same thing. So I'm going to substitute this x for 1 because they are the exact same thing. They're equal to each other. So I'm going to take the 2. I'm going to replace it with a, the, replace the x with a 1 or substitute the x for a 1. And then I end up with negative 1 as my solution or my evaluation of this expression when x equals 1. So that's what we're doing is substitution. And make sure you're using parentheses because the distribution of a negative is going to throw you sometimes. So make sure that you're using parentheses. That is the best practice for this. So we're going to have our first example. And this one will be the most straightforward because it's built for this. And all of our systems are built for one method over another. So 
All three systems we are working with today as examples could be graphed. Totally fine. They could be substituted. Totally fine. They could be eliminated. Totally fine. But sometimes there is a system that is quicker to do by graphing or quicker to do by substitution or quicker to do by elimination. So figuring out which one's the most efficient is definitely the best thing for you because then you can save time. So for this one, y is already by itself. It's a variable. I have two variables right now. I have x and I have y. y is already isolated in this first equation. So I've already done step one. It's been rearranged for me so that one variable, y, is isolated. I'm now going to substitute that equation because y equals 2x plus 5. These are two equal things. Y is the exact same thing as saying 2x plus 5. That means I can substitute for that Y, and wherever I saw Y, I'm now substituting in and replacing it with 2x plus 5. Because they are equal quantities, I can interchange them. And then because there's an invisible plus 1 here, that 1 distributes and it's just 2x plus 5. So on my next line, I can actually combine my like terms, 3x and 2x. So I get 5x plus 5 equals 10. That may not always be the case. We're doing this negative, the parentheses, because sometimes this is a negative or just a coefficient in general that I will have to distribute. That positive 1 was nice, so I didn't have to do it. Subtract 5 on both sides, so I get 5x equals 5, divide by 5, and x equals 1. So this was me doing step 3, solving for the remaining variable. I want to take a break here to pause. We started with two equations with two variables. By substituting that y, I took the y out and put in an expression that has x. Now I'm down to one equation with one kind of variable. I can solve that. We're used to solving one equation with one kind of variable. I combined my like terms, so now you really see it as only one instance of an x, but I solved one equation with one variable. That's the goal with substitution and elimination, is to go from two equations with two variables that are different to one equation with one instance or one type of variable. I can solve for it. So I'm going to box this just so I can find it. So x equals 1, I'm now going to replace that value back in to find the second variable. And since the system is when both equations are true, it doesn't actually matter which one I substitute it back into. I could replace it into the first one, I could replace it into the second one. I'm going to do both just to show you that it's possible. So I can have y equals 2 times 1 plus 5, or I could have 3 times 1 plus y equals 10. Both of these will solve to find the correct y value. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. y is 7. And the second one, 3 plus what equals 10? 7. So from both of these, they're showing me that y's value is going to be 7. That means my coordinate is going to be 1, 7. That's my one solution, all right? So if my answer is 1, 7, that's my coordinate, if I was going to graph these two, they would intersect one time, and their intersection would be at 1, 7. 1 on the x-axis going right 1, and then 7 on the y-axis going up 7. Okay. Example B, 3x plus 4y equals 8 x plus 4y equals 16. So both of these are in standard form, and standard form typically is solved by elimination, but we can actually use substitution to solve the system. If I look at the coefficients on my variables, remember I have two equations with two variables. I have a 3, a 4, a 1, and a 4. I like this 1 because it means I can isolate this x a lot quicker and more efficiently. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to isolate the x by, subs uh, by subtracting the 4y to the other side. These are the exact same equation. I've just rearranged the terms. Because I wanted to eliminate the 4y, it means I have to subtract it on both sides. So I've now subtracted 4y to the right-hand side. And now I'm going to work with this first equation and this second equation. It's the same system, they just look different so that I have one variable isolated. 
x is now equal or synonymous with negative 4y plus 16. That means I can substitute it. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the opposite of 4y plus 16 plus 4y equals 8. All right. And now I'm going to distribute that 3. So I get negative 12y plus 30 plus 18 is 48 plus 4y equals 8. Combine like terms, so I get 48 minus 8y equals 8. Subtract the 48, so I get negative 8y equals negative 40. Divide by negative 8 equals positive 5. Okay, so my y is positive 5. I want you to pause, try to substitute that back into one of the equations and find your x. Remember that all three of these equations are true at y equals 5. Whatever the solution is when y is 5, we'll know the x. I could substitute y as, as positive 5 into any of these equations. The simplest one, though, is our isolated version. So I'm going to have x equals negative 4 times 5 plus 16. That's negative 20. Negative 20 plus 16 is negative 4. So my coordinate will be negative 4 comma 5. Right? So again, if I graph these first two um, equations, they would then intersect at negative 4, 5. And then we will have one last version. y equals negative 1 third x plus 3y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, so notice that y is synonymous with negative 1 third x plus 3, and y is synonymous with 2x minus 4, so y equals y. And when they're solved, when there's a solution, their y's will be equal to each other. So I can substitute this left-hand y, because why not, with negative one-third x plus three, and substitute the right-hand y with two x minus four. So if I substitute them, I get y equals y. Now you get to move the x's wherever you want to move them. So I'm going to eliminate the one-third x and move it to add it to both sides. So I'm going to get 3 equals um, 2 and 1 third is 7 thirds. And then minus 4. I'm going to eliminate the negative 4. So add it to both sides. So I'll get 7 equals 7 thirds x. To undo the, div the multiplication by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is in essence dividing by it. Um, this is over 1. So those make 1. So it's just 3. So x equals 3. Okay, so by substitution and then solving, I find that my x value will be 3. I'm going to actually substitute it back into this one because it has nice whole numbers. But you could actually do it in this one too, really. Negative 1 third. I'm going to do it verbally. Why not? Well, no, I should write it. I'll do the first one. Negative 1 third times 3 plus 3. Negative 1 third of 3 does make 1. So it's just negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So my coordinate will be 3, comma 2. So all three of these examples are where they just intersect one time. And I do want to mention that if you have a system that was 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 1, if you end up with 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 1, so you end up with 2x, or if I subtracted the two x's and I get 1 equals 1, if you get something that's always true like this, that's a solution that is all real numbers. Any number you plug in is or substitute in as a value is going to be a solution. And then if this was, for instance, like a, a 4, um, where 4 does not equal 1, then this would be an example of a no solution. So just wanted to throw that out there as a random side caveat thing, because um, I'm not going to make a separate video about that. It's just making sure that we're going to practice that in class or whatever class that you're in if you're watching this. So there's a little, there's a little caveat of what it looks like. And today is a great filming day. <laughs> okay, comprehension questions, pause it. You've already seen these last video and you're going to see them now two more times. So thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.